Hello Capricorn, I'm Nicholas Ashball. Welcome to your January 2024 forecast. This is going to help you navigate everything that the new year has to offer. You can use it as always for Sun, Rising, Moon, and Venus. We're going to get started with channeled messages, which is basically when I connect directly with spirit and bring through mediumship messages. The first thing that came through was moderation. And I think it's appropriate for many of you that are watching during the holidays to receive this because sometimes we can kind of go down any one of these paths too much. So maybe overworking, overindulging, whether it's in food, drink, or escapism like games or travel or movies. Or sometimes we try to make up for that and then we exercise too much and we're too hard on ourselves. Uh, we may even kind of just pull in and say, I just, I want, I want to be by myself. I don't want to see anybody. Any one of these things in moderation is okay, but if you're doing one or more of them in excess, it actually becomes counterproductive. So this is a time to try to have some fun and treat yourself like we see in the Nine of Cups, but not go to an extreme. Because if we go to the next slide, what I was seeing was um, a loss of control or connection to the resources in your life, time and energy um, in particular. Because I remember talking to someone in dreams and feeling like they didn't know what day it was. Um, and they didn't care. They're like, well, who cares? Uh, we're on vacation. Let's just do this. And I saw them just put a credit card down and things like that. So anything in moderation, like I said earlier, is fine. But if you really go to an excess and lose that connection, that could be something to be mindful of. Really look at the return on what you're putting into something. So if it's a relationship, if it's a job, if it's just something that's bringing you joy in the moment. What's the long-term return on this? Six of Pentacles featured here as a way to kind of weigh out all of these things. For the final message here, there is an awakening that's happening. And I chose the Fool instead of the Judgment card here because this awakening also involves action. And it says, I, I am aware of this and I'm aware of my inner calling and my next step. And I know that in order to breathe life into that and bring it into fruition, it might mean walking away from someone or something where I feel like I'm stagnating. There could be a person where their head's in the clouds or their head is glued to a device and they're not listening or connecting with you. You may be in a job where they just don't want to listen to your in input and they're not really kind of tuning into you. Wherever that is, wherever you're feeling like that person's stuck, the message here is you aren't. You can actually exit, but it took me pushing through the walls of dreaming a few times to wake up and get back into my own body. And so it, it'll take a little bit of a push. I saw three attempts, one, two, three, and then I pushed through the wall. So don't give up if it doesn't happen on the first try. You're going to find a way to land on your feet and get out of this simulation and get into reality. So this is about basically breathing life into goals and dreams cutting yourself free of people, places, or things that have been anchoring you, and also just finding a proper balance in your life. That's a great way to sum up everything that we just talked about. Let's take a look at the cards now and see what additional messages want to come through. Just a quick reminder, you can always use this for sun, rising, and moon. And in fact, we're going to take a deeper dive into all of that later, so I hope you stick around. I'm going to remain quiet here while I pull all of the cards, and then we'll break down the messages. Interesting uh, synchronicity here when we see the workaholic energy coming through. Always enjoy when a card validates what we were picking up on there. We'll talk more about that in a second. Okay, let's begin first with your catalyst message. And the catalyst, as you see, is something that's going to help you spark or create that necessary change and movement in your life. We have the ship here in reverse. 
And for me, this is very Six of Swords oriented. And it could just represent a course correction, a change of mind, a change of heart. It's never too late to make the change happen. And when I pulled it, what came through in spirit was this ship hasn't sailed yet. Uh, and so for some of you, you're basically understanding and realizing it's now or never, but it's still possible. So if you want to do something, the time is now and realize that there is still an opportunity, a chance, there is still potential. So if we look at this close up, we can see all of these people rowing and it, there's a nice comparison to the traditional Six of Swords where the same thing is happening. There's passengers and there's also someone that is conducting this. So the question here is, are you actively moving the, uh, the needle forward, or in this case, the ship forward, or are you waiting for someone else to do it? There's a call to action in this moment in time. So if you're ready, the ship hasn't sailed yet, but you can make it happen. You can make it work. All right, let's take a look at the centermost card. We have the Nine of Wands here, a very hardworking card. And this one is in reverse. So some of you may be wondering, you know, can I get to the finish line? Why is it taking so long? This card is basically validating that you're on the right path. You don't want to give up in this period of time. Uh, a little bit of self-care is usually necessary when this appears, particularly when it comes to anything that's going on in the headspace. This can be overthinking. It can be a tension headache. For some of you, maybe even uh, stress in the upper neck or TMJ. A lot of times you'll see a bandage on this card around the head, so you want to be mindful of that. But typically this is just saying you're very, very close to the finish line and it's worth standing up and pushing to completion, seeing something to fruition here. And crossing this card is a creative and a passionate card, the Knight of Cups or Son of Cups here. And this is about reconnecting with why you're doing what you're doing. And that's where the magic, that's where that second wind comes because you're finally feeling like, oh yeah, uh, I'm really close to what I wanna do. This is almost there, let's do this. I'm excited about it. So finding the passion, reigniting that passion is key. Some of you could just be fatigued overall. Uh, and basically you've done as much as you can do and it may be time to lean on a friend, on a partner, on an advisor for that extra bit of support. So you could be connecting with passion or you could be sharing this sort of fork in the road with someone else and they can help you take it to the finish line. Because we can almost see this like a, a baton, right? Where they, you're a relay race where you're giving that to someone else. So take it as far as you can if you need help, ask for help. The most important thing is to feel that sense of joy, camaraderie, passion, and if it's lacking in your life, now is the time to reignite that. The Knight of Cups can represent a person that's coming into your life that is interested in you. So for those that are looking for love, this could be just that. If you're reaching out and trying to network, this can be a new friendship. And even if you're not, this can just represent the ability to connect well and communicate well with others. Uh, highly sensitive, highly creative, highly intuitive as well. And the key thing that I like with knights is that they're not afraid to take uh, a step in the right direction. They're very active, very proactive, and all of those things are being rewarded in this moment in time. As we take a look at deep past, we have the Page of Swords. Many of you have been working very, very hard to be a better listener. Some of you have been working to articulate yourself more, find your voice, develop your voice. I'm not just talking about everyday talking, but it's also just saying like, hey, I feel this way about that or I need this. So articulating needs, wants and desires, letting things sort of like naturally flow through you and being more of that conduit. More of that is available to you this month. Don't be afraid to speak up. The one thing that the, the secret weapon I should say with the page is its ability to listen and pick up on inspiration in everyday life. So there, there might be something that someone says in passing that you really pay attention to and then you can pull that back into a future conversation and show your level of attention, investment, and also your ability to have a vision on something. So good listening skills, good communication skills, bring them to the forefront. You've done the work. Maybe you just need that little bit of a push. The other thing that's interesting with this is pages sometimes end, end up being like an errand person sometimes or a support person. And it feels like the next nat natural progression for you is to go into one of the court cards here. And we actually do see a king of pentacles. So this is a month where you can start to take on a little bit more, um, step into a role of leadership if that's something that you want. Let's focus here on what I was picking up on 
in the channeled messages, which could be a sense of stagnation. The message in this card is you have more power over the next move than you may give yourself credit for. We literally see a symbol for power, the Ankh there. And this is about making sure that you're gaining perspective and learning whatever lesson it was that kept you in place. The Hanged Man is a teaching card, and sometimes we have to kind of feel like we're stuck or we're up against a wall in order to have an epiphany, a breakthrough, a moment of clarity where we see this isn't efficient, this isn't happening, but that could be. And this is what's going to connect you with the ship. This is what's going to hopefully get you to the point where you say, I'm ready to take those oars, I'm ready to row myself to a different shore, and I'm, I'm okay with that. I featured the Fool earlier, but it could also be Six of Swords, where you're actively pushing and saying, I need to give it one or two or three attempts, because I also saw that. So you're exactly where you need to be. That's the cool thing with the Hanged Man. And you're not going to be there much longer. It's in the recent past. This isn't a future state. This is a past state. All that's necessary is the perspective and maybe the decision of what you want to do next. And not being impatient. That's the key thing. When you're in this hanged man state, listen. Remember what I said, the secret power of the page is its ability to listen and remember and apply that knowledge in the future. And also lean into just how hard you've been working. Things are gonna pick up activity-wise and schedule-wise here. So try to see that sort of different perspective and I think it will pay off. If we take a look at your crowning card, I'm very happy that this one is reversed. The Five of Swords, as we can see here, is someone that basically feeds off of arguments or miscommunications or tries to get a rise out of you. And if there's anyone in your life that's doing that, you see through that and you're just not going to take the bait. Such a powerful thing when you're able to see conflict from a mile away or wasted energy and breath and just not go there. So know which battles are worth fighting and know which ones are not. And that's going to be so useful in helping you save time and, and energy overall. There may be also that chance to just take a fork in the road, like I said, because someone else doesn't want to leave behind that security blanket of whatever it is that they're where their head's in the clouds, but you're very clear on something else. You don't have to explain your decision away. You don't have to try to convince them to change their path. All you have to do is focus on you in this moment. And that's the main message here. I like to remind folks that wherever the Five of Swords is, there's usually the Seven of Swords. Um, and that is someone who also might be trying to get away with something. Again, test, test your limits. You can speak up to that. But for the Five of Swords, there's often a better time or place. So really pick your moment and pick your battle wisely. In the near future, it's all paying off. This is why you don't have time for whoever that is or whatever that is, because we have the Eight of Wands here. You can go the distance. That's what I psychically get when I look at this. Don't get lost in the shuffle. There's a lot going on. Focus on the important things in your life, the, your dreams, your goals, the people that have been there with you, whatever it is that you value. Um, don't lose track of that because I saw that in my uh, channeled messages. This is also saying that don't be afraid to push a little bit more. We see her throwing that sort of like wand into the sky almost like a rocket, and just imagine how far this could take off, this idea, this plan, this endeavor. I feel like it has a lot more speed or velocity behind it than you may, you may imagine, so don't box yourself in with preconceived fears or ideas. And um, as we see here, if you just take a step back and get perspective, you'll start to see the movement. And one thing I like to remind people with, with wands is you can always let go of something if you're feeling blocked or stuck and you can usually get into a better space. Um, you can do much less in wands, like get to the six of wands and there's more success by taking some things off your plate if you need to. Let's move on to you. A change of perspective, the five of cups. So yes, there may have been some things that didn't work out, the three cups we see spilled, but more importantly, there's someone or something that does have your back that is waiting for you. All that's required is processing your emotions and turning and seeing what else there is out there. Okay, so for some of you, you may still be in a process of mourning. There may be something where you're a little bit upset because you had envisioned it in this sort of picture perfect way, but it didn't it turn out that way. But that doesn't mean that the universe doesn't have a reward, an upgrade, or something else. And that's what this card always eventually lands on is, oh, wait a second. Well, there's that. And then we see the bridge behind her. 
the bridge over troubled water. She's going to be able to get beyond this. So any given challenge, disappointment, or setback, it's not really that in its entirety. It's also a chance to help you see what else there is. Rejection is protection. Blocks can actually be a form of redirection as well. And when we just start to look around a little bit and listen, then we might pick up on something, a hidden cue, a hidden opportunity, a hidden idea. Let's see what is going on in the environment here. Someone could be reaching out to you. This king of pentacles is someone that may be thinking about you, may need your time, energy, or assistance. Uh, the thing here is to not sell yourself short because there's a lot of value and worth that they see, but they may drive a hard bargain. This is also a call to be more frugal and um, have some moderation because we saw extremes. I would definitely say the king of pentacles in reverse is someone who overdoes it. This isn't you though. This is around you. And I said exactly that in dreams that when I featured the fool card, that there could be someone that you need to walk away from. And so this is what I was picking up on. I said, um, in the dreams, I had to explicitly walk away from someone who wanted to stay in a simulated or escape state and move uh, and not move into the present. And so as a result, I moved into the present in the dream. So this is the person who's stuck. This is the person who's sort of like might be self-medicating, might be just sort of like surrounding themselves with distractions. And it's time to push back on that. But if you're looking for a job or you're looking for an opportunity, this is someone who needs help and is willing to reach out. You just have to drive a hard bargain, okay? So it can be read a couple of different ways. As we look at hopes, fears, and opportunities, we had two cards here that stuck together. The first of the two cards is the Ace of Swords reversed, and then we also have a Page of Wands in reverse. So with the Ace of Swords, it's a time to take action, especially when it's reversed. There's no delay. Um, a reversed Ace of Swords is also saying if there's something that needs to be said, better to get straight to the point. So a direct approach is going to pay off. And if there's anything that needs to be revised, revisited, or rethought, this is the time to do that. It's good to go back to the drawing board sometimes and take care of something before you get too far along. Then we have a card here of keeping an open mind. The reversal of this can be very closed, be very stubborn. So I think there's an opportunity here to open up and to also speak your ideas into reality and speak about what it is that you have to say or to offer, especially if you're in sort of a brainstorming group or even if you're just spending time with a friend or a partner and they say, what do you want to do? What do you want to eat? It feels like many of you do have an idea. This is just about exercising that throat chakra, which we saw here with the other page here in the deep past the page of swords. So speak up, share your ideas, share your knowledge. And the outcome card is opening a new opportunity to you. Um, the judgment card is rebirth, reinvention. And we can see here that the, the sky is parting and that there's something new. There's a new path ahead of you. So all the stuff that I was talking about earlier, if there was a setback or disappointment, the sooner you can look to this particular space, then you can start to walk this path of discovery and opportunity. You are just on the precipice of turning a new page, of trying something new. January is a perfect time to reinvent, to take a risk, to walk both away and towards something. Here we can see her walking toward her higher calling, uh, which is represented there with the angel. And it's saying, all right, let's do this. If not now, then when? This is a chance to overcome any blocks, to have a second chance, and to make lemonade out of lemons. So I feel like you have something really, really cool on the horizon. Right after this, this is the penultimate or second to last card is the world, which is expansion. So things, like I said earlier, are taking off. They're going to go bigger, bolder, further than you expected, but you have to continue to push yourself along that path. Let's expand this. We'll get some additional insight on how you can do that. Um, we're going to start off with health, but this is the expanded forecast where we look at health, wealth, love, and destiny, starting off with health, your mind, your body, and your spirit. And it was so synchronistic to get this. We had workaholic here. I mentioned earlier that many of you may be in a state where you're going to an extreme. And I mentioned that it could be any number of things from food and drink to exercise to work. So for those of you that are working a lot right now, this is about making sure that you're not losing track of who you're working for, why you're working, and what other things in life bring you joy. So life is finite. I like to remind folks here that we don't focus on the length, but we do know that there's an end point. So this is saying that work isn't the end all be all. 
It's a means to an end. Sometimes it's your passion, but it doesn't have to always be your passion. Just make sure it has a proper place and a proper balance in your life. If you're working for someone that requires ridiculous amounts of energy, it might be time to explore other avenues. If there's someone around you that is, and this work, by the way, could be anything. It could be volunteer work, it could be school, it could be a hobby. Whatever this is, if, you know, if there's someone around you that also got lost in that, it's escapist energy. So you can do your best to try to ground them, but the main thing here is not to get swept up into someone else's stress or someone else's escapism. Keep your feet on the ground. That's one thing that I was focusing on in, in dreams and meditations. Let's continue to take a look at this from a wider lens and see what additional messages are coming through. So we have a chance, a second chance at something. So some of you may have had a health wake up call. And this is the sort of recalibration moment where it's like, well, that could have gone a lot worse. It maybe didn't go as well as I wanted, but there's still a lot to celebrate. A new normal, a second chance, a reset moment. Take that and really embrace it. Not everybody gets a second chance or a reset. So if that makes sense to you, then um, again, you're blessed. Embrace it. Good days are ahead. <laughs> Uh, some things here that I'm seeing here, like I said earlier, this can be uh, tension headaches, stress headaches, sometimes even just difficulty in concentrating, things with the cranium and the jaw, something I've been picking up on in the last couple of signs, and also just general fatigue. So try to manage, I believe this is mostly a stress-related card, take care of that. This particular uh, illustration has a lot to do with like the Achilles tendon, the heel, the right before you even get into the foot, it's like the lower part of the ankle and all of those sort of tendons around it. Take care of your, your feet and make sure that if there's anything going on there, you get a specialist. Uh, this is about overindulging. So it's not just the overwork <laughs> energy, it's also, like I said, over drinking, overeating, uh, over exercising, overdoing it. All of that excess stuff that I talked about a little bit earlier, I'll pull the card up one more time. We can definitely learn from here and apply the knowledge. So here you go. All of these things we want to make sure that we're not doing. And it's just escapism in general. Usually there's something that is causing stress, pain, or something that you don't want to notice. And, and, and I'm sure that many of you have gone into that energy of just thinking, well, if I put my attention here, then I don't have to deal with that. And this is that wake-up call that you might need. Otherwise, it's good. And when we look at these two cards, they're actually auspicious. This is saying things are going to start moving in the right direction and you get a second chance. So I couldn't ask for more there. The only thing that I'm seeing here that may help some of you is a change, a change of scenery, a change of environment, um, a trip or some travel. All of those things could actually help facilitate perspective. So Perspective and pulling back from excess or extremes, especially when it comes to fixation on money, okay, or work, or an activity. <laughs> Let's go to the next message here. We're going to go on to wealth, resources, life purpose, and career. Let's see what's coming through here. We have a horse, the Palomino, and a lot of times I just, I have different modern decks that will just have a horse for the chariot. And an you know, basically like a Mustang or a wild horse may need a little bit of um, sort of wrangling here. So some of you may just feel like there's a lot of energy, a lot of potential, but you're, you're kind of zigzagging a bit. So we're looking for direction. We're looking for someone to take that horse and point it in the right direction. Get another horse, you have a chariot. So I see a lot of energy, a lot of pent up sort of uh, frustration for some of you. And it's just about how and where you're going to focus and apply that. This is also a card that may not want to be controlled. I was talking about a Mustang or a wild horse. Uh, and so for some of you, this is saying, I'm an independent thinker and worker. I want to do my own thing. Go for it. We have a great card here for leadership, the King of Pentacles. He has the Midas touch. You see that pile of gold there and this mountain of, you know, whatever's growing, <laughs> some sort of beautiful fruits and vines. So uh, you can make it happen. And... It's just a matter of applying the energy and focusing. Now let's broaden this a little bit into your life and see what could be going on. I'm gonna start first with those that are working, then we'll look at job seeking people and those that are retired. If you're working, there's frustration, particularly when it comes to where you thought you'd be and where you are, um, but there's still possibilities to make it happen. I feel like if you wanna to try to make it work there, there it's, 
it's sort of like, again, now or never, not necessarily ultimatum, but you're going to state with no uncertain um, terms like this is where I expect to be. And you're giving someone a second chance. If they don't meet that, they being the employer or the person that's helping you get set up for this, then you know that it's time to move on. It's worth an attempt. You're coming through with like the Midas touch. So I feel like you can do it. Need to get it in writing. I, I, like just a handshake's not enough. The Ace of uh, Swords is writing, especially reversed. And if you don't like a contract, again, negotiate, because I do feel like there's deeper pockets here because I see the King of Pentacles. Uh, I also think that it's not worth, if you're gonna start a negotiation, let's keep it positive. This card reversed is understanding that there may be some grievances, but it's best to go forth with um, good intentions, good communication, positive affirmative speech, and then you can kind of put in something very clear saying, this is where I expect to be. Let's get it started because I really want to be there this time next year. And if that doesn't happen, then you can say, or whatever's going on, just put it in writing and avoid the negative. That's going to steer the conversation in the wrong direction, okay? I think you can get what you're trying to um, negotiate. And if not, you can find it somewhere else. You're in a good power position. Now, just looking at the environment of who you're spending your time and energy around, they're going to take as much as you're willing to give. Don't be afraid to say no. Don't be afraid to push back and absolutely remind them of how much you do. <laughs> Sometimes people don't realize that. Don't, don't kind of get caught up in these energies because that is negativity and this is sadness. So we really want to get to empowerment, um, being strong, maybe even a little pushy, being outspoken. And then if you need to walk, walk, okay? You will be okay. There is a second chance. And if, you, if you're in a situation where, you know, the doors were shuttered to a company because, you know, there was a, uh, they went out of business or they merged or reduction of forces, it's towards a better tomorrow for you. This is still a blessing. It doesn't feel like it in the moment, but don't discount your ability to network and connect with someone and land on your feet because it looks like that's possible. All right. For those that are job seeking, this is kind of a nice segue into that. Don't give up. This is a card where it looks like you're making some really good progress. The problem right now, especially if you're watching during the holidays, people are busy, but even in January, people are busy. So it's important for you to lead with the most important thing that you have to offer someone. Front load your conversation, your resume, your if there's a little statement on the thing that you're filling out online, whatever the application, just lead with the hook because this person needs to know whoever you're trying to get a job from is like, what is it? What's in it for me? What can this person do for me? I do think you want to be mindful of things like overtime and compensation because this card is stingy with compensation and expects a lot when it comes to overtime. So negotiate your contract wisely. Can you find it? Yes. I would encourage you to find, uh, to look at jobs though, that may be a little bit left of, or right of center um, because the judgment card is, starting fresh, looking at something from what? A different perspective. Just as a personal aside, when I went to school, YouTube didn't exist. Um, and so I have skills though that were transferable. I studied journalism. I studied film and nonlinear editing, how to basically edit in computers and do it. Like I was at the forefront of that. And then I always kept up with everything technological. And so once I saw, oh, there's this wonderful way to get things out, I don't have to go through a traditional like studio to do it. I can go straight through YouTube. Then it took away all the middleman and I had all the skills. So you can take existing skills and apply them to new technologies, new and emerging technologies and new companies. So it's just about seeing yourself in a different light and taking a step, taking a risk, taking a chance. For those of you that are retired, let's turn the lens there for a second. Creative energy is flowing through. Some of you want to take up a new hobby. This though is very artistic in nature. So it may be something like painting, dancing, sculpting, um, music, anything of like in the fine arts, for instance. Uh, this is also a card here that's community based. So you may also decide to get out there and do things with like-minded individuals. So we're coming out of that sort of hermiting energy into a more social energy, which is cool. Uh, we also see someone here who may be really, really into a philanthropic sort of part of their career or just want to give back. So this can be teaching, mentoring or philanthropy because the card is reversed. Um, so the, the money is going in the opposite direction. And it's also for many of you just saying, I want to take care of myself. I want to do this not because 
it's going to make me money or going to bring anything other than personal satisfaction. And good for you. If you've worked a lot and you're finally retired, I'm happy to see that in this point in time. Don't be afraid to, um, some of you are really good at recording or telling stories. Uh, so this is a chance maybe to wrap that up into something bigger. Maybe you have a story to share with people, whether it's through books or through film or through literature, that story could be exciting. But the main thing here is it's a new chapter. Explore things that you've never tried before, including travel. Both of these cards have a little bit of a travel edge to it. Okay, let's move on to love and relationships. So we have signs from heaven coming through on this, and it says, thank you, heaven, for sending me reminders of your presence. Some of you may have come to today's reading saying, I want a message from someone who's passed. This card is coming through as a validation that they see you, they love you. Even if there's something important in your life and you thought to yourself, Nicholas, I wish they were there. I just got married. I just graduated. I just had a birth of a child or grandchild. They're there. They see that. They're communicating that message now. Okay, that's a beautiful message. Also, this is about the subtlety of the way that spirit works. So if there's something that you need to see or know about the person that you love, really tune into the subtle energies, the little signs that they give you day to day that they care or that they may need something. And we're going to look at that now as we tune into everything. So we're going to look at this on three levels, starting off with those that are already in a relationship, then we'll look at those seeking, and then those that are happily single. So if you're already in a loving relationship, the, the number one challenge right now is around communication and not going to a place where you may feel inclined to fight or point a finger um, or even try to push the other partner's buttons. Because we know, <laughs> especially with the one that you love the most, you know what's going to bother them. So let's not get involved in that. And if they're doing that, remind them that this isn't really helping matters, right? There's a distance component. Some of you may have a long distance relationship. You may be feeling even distant from your partner, even if they're in the same city. This is a chance to try to bridge that gap. And we even see the bridge here. As we're looking at all of these things, let's look at what's going on in the center here. Just a lot of work, a lot of busyness. And I think for some of you, you're, you're kind of stuck in that. This is where the stagnation is. A lot of energy around work, activities. Um, for many of you, just getting wrapped up in all of that sort of resources and practical matters. And it's saying, make time for each other, uh, make time to communicate, and that's gonna be key. So a date night, just simply saying no to some of this other noise that's coming through. There could have also been an argument or difficulty, and it's hard to move past that because it hurts your feelings, um, especially if someone that you love just wasn't there in the way that you needed it. You have to look at how much you've worked together and how long you've built on this uh, and decide, am I willing and ready to go th to the next step and do the work? I think the hardest thing here is getting people to hear and listen. So this is someone saying critical, not necessarily constructive point. This is getting stuck in someone's head. And so we see someone holding a grudge and it could just be feeling like you, you don't hear me. You don't know me. You don't see me. So if there is any of that sort of energy, just really meeting in the middle and not casting judgment before the other partner has a chance to empathize and really just understand what's going on. Let's shift this now to those that are looking. If you're looking for love, there's almost too many options right now, which usually means a, a lack of decision or lack of focus because we have uh, earth sign, we have a fire sign, we have a water sign, we have an air sign, all elements represented. So when this happens, can you find love? Absolutely. What's lacking? Clarity, vision, availability. For some of you, when I look at availability, it's because of the work. There's a lot of activities or maybe focus on personal development or money at this, this time, and that's fine. It's about taking a step back and really getting in touch with what you want and what you feel. Creative activities can actually help you just doing things that create fun and joy in your life. And they do not have to have any other purpose other than it makes you happy and it opens up the heart space. I think slowing down is the main message. Believe it or not, if you're looking for love, slow down, tune into yourself, pull back a little bit from some of these activities, get a firm handle on your money. And then what we see here in possibilities is a karmic partnership with a fire sign um, because this is what's possible. A little bit of recalibration is necessary first, but that's what I'm picking up on. That being said, there are each and every element present here, but this one's coming through the strongest and it feels like this person may even kind of initiate a conversation with you first. But clearing up the schedule, 
clearing up your money since I saw all of those things in channeled messages and doing something you love. You'll bump into that person naturally because now we have um, the knight and the page sort of like finding their way to one another and I think that'll be good. Let's take a look now at those of you that are single and happy. Here's the good news. I still see a lot of new people coming into your life. Two pages and a knight. So these are people that are opening up new doors, maybe having just a very youthful way of living or thinking. And this could be very supportive to whatever it is that you want to build in your life at this moment too. So we have a leadership card and a lot of people that want to follow or connect with you. It's a great time to network. Uh, I also see you just really, really busy. I think the biggest challenge here is not just managing your time or money, it's managing your calendar because there may be, uh, you know, not enough room or days in the week to get everything done. Um, the main thing, again, is to try new things. It's like going to the ice cream store and always getting the same flavor. This is a month to mix it up, to try something that you haven't before. And I definitely see travel as a component to this. So there could be someone coming into your life that um, you haven't met before, or you may be doing some traveling and you'll meet people as you're attempting some of these new endeavors. But networking, personal development, artistic, creative uh, development as well, all of these things coming through. Suffice it to say, it's an end to anything that was stagnating. It's a chance for you to embrace surprising friendships and alliances. And I think that this is going to open up a lot of exciting doors for you. Let's move on to destiny. We have courage and bravery coming through here. The card in reverse is basically saying, don't give up. Remember what I talked about in the channeled messages. I said that in order to escape that virtual Hotel California, I had to push through two or three times to get out of the space and come back into my body and be awake. So for some of you, the awakening could be a little discombobulating. It might take one or two attempts to get something to work, but it's worth the time. It's worth fighting. This could also be an encouragement from the universe to take care of any legal or contractual issues that have been sitting on the back burner. Now is the time to rectify it. Now is the time to get everything organized. You'll be glad that you did, and it's going to set you up for a good new year. So sort out contracts, fight for something that matters, push a few times to get something off and running. And after that, you should start to see some movement. Let's go ahead now and take a look at sun, rising, and moon sign messages and get a deeper understanding of the month ahead. Let me give the cards a shuffle and we'll see what's coming through. Sun, rising, and moon, they're all major, major energies. This will be easy though. All right, for the sun sign, interestingly enough, we got the sun. And we have this beautiful birthing or even harvesting energy that's coming through with this. And it's saying right here, right now, this is the time. If you want to launch something, if you want to say something, if you want to do something, this is the time to express yourself. And with the sun card, it's arguably one of the best energies when it comes to relationships, um, the public eye projects, all of that stuff, because it is. It's the epitome of um, charisma and brightness and connection to source. I would say the only card that I like even more than this would be this, uh, the star itself. But the sun card, very, very good for that. And it's a birthing card as well. If we zoom in really closely, we can see this little dove sitting on her hand. And it is just basically the universe saying, are you ready? Let's release that dove. Let's celebrate this moment. Let's make it happen. Okay. The sun, of course, is also connected to the solar plexus. So one of the areas that you can work on, not only for your general health, but also for helping with communication, for posture, for confidence, it's going to be the solar plexus. So that's something that you can consider. Let's move on to rising. We have a really big card here, arguably one of the bigger cards in the major arcana. Necessary changes is what the tower represents. Not only necessary, but oftentimes you can see it coming. And this is, it's gonna be important here for you to decide, do you wanna wait for someone else to make a decision for the universe to decide what's gonna happen? Or do you want to take the bull by the horns and say, let's do this? It's time to lean into those necessary changes and be the agent of change. If you do that, you have a really good chance of affecting it in a way that is beneficial for you rather than trying to play catch up. This can also represent a period of time where things that were very much stable and predictable are starting to shift in your life. So you may find that you have to move, move for work or move for love. You may find that there's some changes in your health that you have to put the focus on. Whatever it is, it's manageable, but the main thing here is to embrace it and address it. And then once that happens, everything starts to clear. Okay. Typically the tower helps us release something that doesn't serve us any longer. Um, but a lot of times 
there is this resistance because it felt comfortable, it felt predictable. So the universe comes in and says, I'll give you no choice but to change. So my key to success with the tower is to see the change, deal with it, embrace it, and then you can get past that sort of moment and into the energy of creation and really sort of developing something new. All right, moving into the moon sign messages, we have the 10 of cups. Many of you may find yourself in a new relationship, focusing more on core relationships. You may also see yourself in a place where people are reaching out to you more for advice, for support. It's in the upright position. It's very favorable. Yes, it means if you're looking for love that you can find it. There could be birthing or um, adoption or some sort of expansion of the family in the future for many of you as well. Typically, I would just say this is good news. So brace yourself for some good news, for some new people, for some developments in relationships, and it's all pretty favorable, folks, okay? Let's go ahead now and look at the bonus card for 2024. This is basically where the major energy and opportunity is coming through. This is something special for New Year's readings. So let's see what we've got here. The Four of Pentacles in reverse is you raising the bar. You're saying, this is not enough. And it can be part of a negotiation, a back and forth. Like if you're negotiating for a job or you're trying to sell a house or something like that, you can simply say, this is too far off base. This is best and final. So if you have to draw the line somewhere, you can do that. This can also represent people or habits or things in your life where before maybe it was good enough. Now you're no longer in that energy of good enough. You're ready to expand. You're ready to connect to all the possibilities. And you're gonna say, you know what? I'd rather hold some space and leave it this open rather than hold on to something that isn't sustaining or isn't fulfilling me, okay? So I quite like that you're basically ready to stand up for yourself and lean into your worth. Let's now look at the final question and final card for today. Think about something that I haven't had a chance to look at yet. I'm sure all of you have at least one more question. Let's go ahead and see what the universe has to say about that question. The Page of Pentacles, very auspicious. This would be a yes to a yes, no. There's some general guidance with this card as well. It's about focusing on the facts and really feeling worthy of something. So when you are excited about what you're putting forth in the world, whether it's new music, a uh, new menu item that you cooked up, whether it's also like you're putting a resume out there and applying for a job, you just have to really work on the confidence, the joy, and that sort of infectious charisma that makes the difference here. When you believe, they believe. And so that's really the message behind this is get into that state where you just can't wait to pick up the phone, send an email or share something. That's when the magic starts to happen. And if it isn't there, work on it until you get to that point. So when you're ready, the universe is ready. Um, but generally speaking, this can represent movement or good news that's incoming. A positive email, a good phone call, a great meeting, someone out stretching a hand and saying, let's do this, all right? Really nice note to end on today. Before we wrap up, just a couple of quick notes. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, subscribe, and opt into notifications. That way you'll never miss out on a future video. You can also follow me on social media. It's always my full name, Nicholas Ashbaugh. I hope to see you there. You can give back, it's optional, but there's some official ways to do that here. You can do it through Super Sticker, Super Chat, the Thanks button, and also through joining and becoming a member. All optional, of course, but they really do help, uh, and it allows me to, to launch new types of content on this channel, so thank you in advance. You can always go to my website if you want um, official information and official links, especially when it comes to social media. A reminder, I do not offer private readings and I do not use direct messages. So if anybody does that, from time to time that happens on social media, just block report and let me know about it, okay? If you uh, want to know when I put out new videos, it's pretty easy to remember. It's Monday, Thursday, and Friday for posted videos, Sunday for live streams, and that's at 9.15 a.m., and daily for a one card or one minute psychic download. I would just like to end by saying thank you so much for being the best part of what I do here on YouTube. I wouldn't be here without your love, support, and help, so thank you very much. Wishing you the best of holidays, a very happy 2024, and I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.